Good morning, brothers and sisters. We offer this Mass for our deliverance from the pandemic of COVID-19 and the reopening of our church. For our frontliners who unselfishly offer their services in these difficult times. For those afflicted with the virus and other diseases and those who have died. For proper guidance and enlightenment of our civil and church leaders, for those who sent their private intentions, for the benefactors and friends of the Basilica, and for our personal intentions. Let us now dispose ourselves for the celebration of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass by praying the act of oblation before Holy Mass. Eternal Father, I offer you the sacrifice wherein your dear Son Jesus offered himself upon the cross and which he now renews upon his altar to adore you and to render to you the honor which is your due. Acknowledging your supreme dominion over all things and their absolute dependence on you. For you are our first beginning and our last end. To give you thanks for countless benefits received. To appease your justice provoked to anger by so many sins. And to offer you worthy satisfaction for the same. And finally, to implore your grace and mercy for myself. For all those who are in tribulation and distress. For all poor sinners for the whole world, and for the blessed souls in purgatory. Amen. Please stand.
ipagdasal po natin si Juan. Brethren, let us a college shall persist and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. So the Lord asked God for wisdom to govern His people, well, because He seeks the good of the people as a true treasure. The Lord grants His request and other things beside. A reading from the Book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am near you, knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered for Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding, so that you may know what is wrong. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, I love your command. Lord, I love your commands. I have said, O Lord, that my part is to keep your words. The law of your power is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Lord, I love your commands. Let your kindness comfort me according to your promise to your servants. Let your compassion come to me that I may live, for your law is my love. Lord, I love your commands. For I love your command more than gold, however fine, for in all your precepts I go forward. Lord, I love your commands. Wonderful are your decrees, therefore I will serve them. The revelation of the words shed love, giving understanding to the simple. Lord, I love your commands. God ordains everything, including painful and difficult moments, for good and those who love Him. This love should inspire us to be open and obedient to the will of the Father for us. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to this purpose. For those he loved him, he also prestigied to, to, to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he prestigied, he also called, and those he called, he also justified, and those he justified, he also called. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again. And out of joy, goes and sells all that he has, and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has, and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they hold it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets, and what is bad they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous, and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be waiting and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, Yes. And he replied, Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the good and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is it. Jesus proposes three parables in today's Gospel. The first, he compared the kingdom of heaven to a field with a buried treasure. Then, he compared it to a pearl of great price. And lastly, he compared it to a catch of fish where the good ones were kept in a bucket and those useless things were thrown back into the sea. My dear brothers and sisters, all of us are in search for something. Ano ang hanap mo? Di ba yung lang naririnig natin patungkol tayo sa palengke? Sir, ma, ano po ang hanap niyo? Tayong lahat na hinahanap. Ang iba, nakahanap ng kaligayan. Ang iba, nakahanap ng lunas sa kanilang mga sakit. Ang iba, nakahanap ng karangyahan sa buhay kaya nagtrabaho araw-araw. Ang iba, nakahanap ng buhay walang handa. What are we searching for, my dear brothers and sisters? Are we searching for things that perish? Are we looking for things that will get lost or be destroyed? Ano po ang hanap natin? Ang hinahanap natin, siguro, happiness. In other religions, that is what they call bliss, di ba? Eternal bliss. And also, Christianity. It promises eternal happiness in heaven. What are we looking for? Masarap ang kapkain? Anong nakapagbibigay sa iyo ng satisfaction? Are you satisfied with chicken joy? Are you satisfied with material wealth? Does the things of this world, yung mga titulo ng lupa, yung mga certificate of time deposit, ito ba ang nais natin sa buhay? What are we searching for? In the Gospel, there are three parables that this person is mentioned by Jesus found. A man found a treasure buried in a field. So what did he do? 
He went to sell all his possessions in order for him to buy the field where the treasure was buried. Amen? Then comes the story of the merchant in search of the fine pearl. When he found the pearl of great price, he sold everything in order to buy the pearl of great price. Then the last parable was like a net thrown into the sea that collected many things that the owner has to keep the good ones that were collected by the nets and throw those things that were useless. So there are two things that are common in the parable. First, in order to possess what you want, you have to dispose something. Anong ginawa nung nakakamat ng lupa na may tesoro, may treasure na kabeli? Ibinenta niya lahat na kanyang alialian para mabili niya yung lupa niya kung nasaan at kaya namin. Ganun din ang ginawa ng merchant nung nakita niya ang perlas na kanyang inaan pinakaasal-asal the pearl of great price he sold everything in order to buy the pearl of great price so in other words in order for us to possess we have to dispose first so what are we willing to dispose my dear brothers and sisters in order for us to attain eternal happiness to it attain eternal life. Siguro, malinaw na lang, malinaw sa atin kung ano yung buried treasure, kung ano yung pearl of great price, hindi ko ba? Kung ano yung mga bagay na dapat natin ikit and at yung mga bagay na kinakailangan i-dispose. Are we searching for more material wealth? Or are we searching for happiness, satisfaction, something that would guarantee us eternal life. Sa panahon ng COVID, marami tayong matutunan. Na kahit marami kang pera, mamamatay pa kami. Kahit marami kang lupain, kung wala kang good health, you cannot make use of your possessions. Even if you have the best car, a big mansion to live in. Kung isang araw, yung mansion na yan, alam mong kasusunod, maayot yung barbo. Kahit na ganyang kakapal, at itulo ng iyong mga lupa. Kung namatay ka, pag-aaway-awayan lang yan ng mga iiwan mo sa mundo nito. Di ba? So what is the reason that we live? Have we found the pearl of great price? Have we discovered the treasure buried in the field that we are willing to surrender everything in order to possess the pearl of great price, the treasure that is buried in the field, or the good things that were collected by the nets that we have placed in a bucket? Ano-ano ang mga bagay na pwede natin i-dispose? The things that are not necessary in life. People, places, things that separate us from God who is the source of our true happiness and eternal life. May mga bagay-bagay ba na gusto mong tanggalin sa iyong buhay para ikaw ay maging masaya? Bakit parang sa atin ang hindi satisfied sa mundo? Kasi nag-iingin sa nakikita nila mga posts sa Facebook. Diba? In other words, we see each other as a competitor. We see each other as someone who has to be always below us. Kaya yung ibang tao, they are happy in the sense na kapag nauunahan nila yung ibang tao. And that is the 
Filipino style. No, bakit hindi ba resort resort ang traffic? Eh kasi nagpupunahan tayo palagi sa kalsada. Bakit hindi tayo ang asenso? Eh kasi nagpupunahan din tayo sa negosyo. In the sense that we do not help each other to prosper. Di ba? Ang isang araw, baka natin sa isang kalye. May nag-open ng barbecue ba? After one week, dumalo yan sa kanya. May dalawa ng barbecue doon. And the other day, I just passed by lima na ang barbecue doon. So I was thinking, sino ang bibili ng barbecue sa isang kalye? Sila sila lang makakapit pa. Unless you put a street party, mauubos yung stock ng barbecue. So in other words, my dear brothers and sisters, there are many things that make us happy. And the things that make us happy are not the material things. Aani mo ang bahay kung nasusunod o wala na katira doon na kaya ang kasama mo. Aani mo ang pera if you do not know how to be happy with it. So what matters is our relationship. Our relationship with God and with one another. Yun ang mahalaga sa buhay. Huwag po natin kalimutan. The pearl of great price or the treasure that is buried in the field compared as a kingdom of heaven can be summarized as the way we relate with God and with one another. If you have a good relationship with God, if you have a good relationship with your neighbors, then you are at peace. You are happy. You are satisfied. Pero kung hinihisip yung natin ay to amass material wealth, maging masaya tayo sa ating mga bisyo, we will never be satisfied. Why? Because Saint Augustine beautifully says, Our hearts are restless until they rest on you, O Lord. You know, a financial manager told me, Alam mo, Father, pagka malungkot ka, huwag kang mag-shopping. Bakit? Kasi pag malungkot ka, there is a void in you. There is a vacuum. No? Na kinakailangan mo punuhin. So the tendency is, pag nalulungkot ka at nag-grocery ka, for example, kahit hindi mo kailangan ng isang bagay, hindi na nagalagay mo yun sa shopping cart. Because you think that will make you happy, you think that will satisfy the longing in your heart. And who can satisfy the vacuum in our hearts? Who can satisfy that longing in our life? Only God. The rest of the Bible beautifully puts it. Solo Dios basta. God alone suffices. God alone can satisfy our hunger. God alone can satisfy our longing for eternal happiness. And God alone can satisfy our longing for life eternal. In other words, the pearl of great price, the treasure that is buried in the field, and those good things that we may have retained in our pockets, they all boil down to one. Our relationship with God. That is the kingdom of heaven. When we are in a good relationship with God, when we are in good relationship with our brothers and sisters, then, my dear brothers and sisters, we have found the pearl of great price, the treasure that is buried in the field, that we are willing to dispose the things that are not necessary in life.
Please stand. We profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God our Father has given us the gift of faith as a treasure and a pearl of great price. Let us continue to cherish this gift and share it with people around us by giving up to the demands of our faith. Let us pray. Lord, hear your people. Lord, hear your people. That Francis our Pope and all church leaders may work Christ before making the kingdom of heaven permeate through the life of humanity. We pray. Lord, hear your people. That God's people may hold on to their faith and Christian values as true and lasting treasures and not be seduced by the passing joys of power, prestige, and pleasure. We pray. Lord, hear your people. The believers of nations may work for prosperity and progress without forgetting their people and their deepest human values. We pray. Lord, hear your people. That all missionaries around the world may joyfully share their talents and possessions at the service of people, especially the poor, the sick, and the needy, we pray. Lord, hear your people. That those who have died, especially missionaries, may at last find their pearl of great price in the heavenly kingdom and obtain eternal peace with God, we pray. Lord, hear your people. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, hear your people. Most loving Father, hear the prayers of your people. Let your kingdom come to us and open our hearts to our brothers and sisters who hunger and thirst for your word. Grant us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by His birth He brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled all our sins by his rising from the dead he has opened the way of eternal life and by ascending to you O father he has unlocked the gates of heaven and so with the company of angels and saints we sing the name of your praise as we love them we acclaim
sa tilog na halas worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Ricardo, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us now pray the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from, from you. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, remember me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me, within your bones, hide me, permit me not to be separated from you, from the wicked foe, defend me, at the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you, that with your saints I may embrace you forever and ever. Amen.
while before your face I humbly kneel and with perfect soul pray and beseech you to fix deep in my heart lively sentiments of faith, hope, and charity through contrition for my sins and a clear purpose of amendment while I contemplate with great love and tender pity your five most precious wounds pattering over them within me and calling to mind the words that David your prophet said of you my Jesus they have pierced my hands and feet they have numbered all my bones prayer to our lady of God O Virgin Mary our lady of the visitation of God I have reports to you today I do offer this day in praise and thanksgiving for past benefits and in the hope of receiving new blessings which you know I need in life. They, O oh dearest Mother, to shower upon us all the blessings which we need most for body and soul, particularly. and the special grace to die in God's love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lady of God, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.